Hello, I'm Dr. Mark Mitchell. I'm a professor of zoological medicine at Louisiana State University School of Veterinary Medicine. And today, I'd like to talk to you about the care of crested geckos. These are amazing lizards. They're really easy to handle, and they're great pets for families and first-time lizard owners. However, like any pet, it's important that you do your research before you come home with your new pet. Be sure you have all of your supplies and have them set up to ensure that the transition for your new crested gecko will be as easy as it can be. First, let's talk about the enclosure that the crested geckos need. Because these guys are arboreal, they need vertical height. Leopard geckos, on the other hand, don't need that same height. What I always recommend is a minimum 20 gallon tank, but if you have the opportunity to use a much taller tank, such as this 37 gallon tank, it will allow you to put more plantings in to give that home feeling to that crested gecko. Of course, it's also important to keep a screen lid on top, such as the Fluker's screen cover. This will ensure that your gecko can't escape the enclosure and it keeps other pets and small hands out that we don't want in the enclosure handling those lizards. Next, let's talk about the substrate for your crested gecko. It's really important that we select substrates that actually retain moisture to help maintain humidity. However, for new acquisitions, because I like to make sure that they don't have a diarrhea or a parasite issue, I'll often recommend using something like the Fluker's Reptiliner or paper towels. That will allow the pet owner to go ahead and monitor and collect feces, and we can go ahead and check them for parasites. Soon thereafter, however, we want to go ahead, as I mentioned, and use a substrate that's going to be more permanent, such as Fluker's Coconut Fiber Brick, the Loose Coconut Fiber, or the Reptibar. All three of these types of substrates will hold the moisture very well. And because we're really after vertical height, the substrate doesn't have to be too deep for these animals. A thin layer will be sufficient. And then we can just spread the substrate around to ensure that we have full coverage. Next, let's talk about accessories for our crested geckos. The accessories are really the cage furniture, or the things that really make the habitat the home for these animals. Because these animals love to climb and they're arboreal, we want to make sure we fill that vertical space. Include a variety of plants, either plastic or live, branches, vines, or anything else that will spread out the space in the habitat. We recommend Fluker's Reptivines, Bend a Branch, and bamboo bars, as you can see in our setup here. It is important that you don't overclutter the tank because it can get a little bit too crowded for the animals, but provide enough so that they can hide and not be seen when they don't want to be seen. Next, I'd like to talk about the climate of the enclosure for our crested geckos. So we're going to talk about light, temperature, and humidity. These animals come from warm, subtropical climates. So they're used to temperatures that are a little bit more moderate than some of our other species of lizards. Daytime temperatures should be in the 75 to 80, 82 degree range. And so if you have a household where you keep your temperature much cooler than that, it's important that you actually provide some supplemental heat. Nighttime temperatures can drop between 68 and 75 degrees. So in most cases, we're only going to use our heat or lighting system for 12 hours a day. We actually like to recommend for the heat using light because it mimics the sun. And what we can do in those cases is use one of our, our Fluker uh, clamp lamps. And we can also use any of a variety of infrared lights. For daytime light, we can use one of our incandescent neodymium bulbs. Or if we want to spot these animals when they're more active at night, we can use our red bulb or we can use our black bulbs as well. In all those cases, 12 hours of clear daylight and then 12 hours of the other light will be just fine. In addition, if you come from a really cool area and you're worried about some of the temperature, you can always go ahead and use a heat mat such as the Fluker's premium heat mat. This can actually be put on the underside or even the side of the enclosure to radiate some heat just to get a little bit more temperature set up for our crested geckos. In addition to the the incandescent lighting, it's also important that we provide our crested geckos UVB lighting. 
There's been some more recent research that suggests that these animals, like leopard geckos and many of our other lizard species, benefit from UVB exposure. To provide that, what I like to recommend is using the Fluker's sun glow bulb, and my preference for these animals is to use the 5.0 sun glow bulb. It can also be put with a reptile clamp light and put on the opposite side of the enclosure. In that particular case, we'll have a gradient associated with the temperature and the UVB. And with that UVB light, it can be left on for about two hours a day. That's all it's really going to need. Finally, I wanted to talk about humidity. Crested geckos thrive when the humidity is about 50 to 70 percent. And we can go ahead and maintain the humidity by using live plants or plastic plants that we go ahead and spray. I like to use the Reptile Fluker's um, sprayer. And in this particular case, you can use tap water. You don't have to dechlorinate it because the chlorine will help minimize some of the bad bacteria that may be in the environment. When we're thinking about temperature and humidity, it's really important that we know what they are in the enclosure. And so in those cases, we recommend the Fluker's thermometer hygrometer. This digital system can be moved around the enclosure from under the heat lamp to the cool side to identify what the temperature and humidity is. It can also tell us um, where the humidity gradient is and it may force us to go ahead and spray the enclosure a little bit more. Next, I'd like to talk about the diet and nutrition of crested geckos. These animals are omnivores, which means that they eat animal protein as well as plant protein, or more specifically, fruits in the case of our crested geckos. Adult crested geckos should be fed at night about three times a week. They tend to get obese if you feed them every day, whereas juveniles or reproductively active females should be fed every day. It's important when we're thinking about the prey insects because most times what we end up feeding are crickets or mealworms, and we should limit the number of things like mealworms, is that we have to gut load them before we actually offer them to the gecko. It's also important to feed the appropriate size cricket to the gecko because if we feed too big of a cricket, it can actually start to eat the gecko's skin because they're also omnivores. So I like to keep the cricket to no bigger than the distance from the tip of the nose to the point of the eye. We'll always go ahead and recommend gut loading the crickets or mealworms prior to feeding them. Fluker Farms has a high calcium cricket chow or they also have an orange cube complete diet that can be offered to those crickets. If you're feeding the high calcium cricket chow, it's important to put a slice of apple or potato for moisture for those animals or a small sponge that's soaked in water. Always gut load for at least 6 to 12 hours and no more than 24 hours to ensure that the diet is in the prey insect and we feed it to our crested gecko. Crested geckos are, are um, also unique in that these animals um, are frugivores and like fruit type materials. At Fluker Farms, we actually have a crested gecko diet that's a powder that can be mixed with water and added directly to a food bowl and fed to these animals as well. This actually has a complete diet as well as the appropriate um, trace elements associated with it. In addition to the diet itself, and especially if we have concerns with how much these animals are eating or if they're eating more insects, sometimes we'll also supplement the insects with a dusting powder or add a little bit of the dusting powder to the fruit diet to ensure that we're getting exactly what we want. In addition to offering the food, we can go ahead and always offer water, and the water should be placed into a bowl, such as the super uh, rigid bowls that we have here. The water can be taken directly from the tap and it doesn't have to be de dechlorinated because in this case um, we want that chlorine to help manage some of the pathogenic bacteria that may be in there. Again, don't forget, clean and change that water bowl daily. Next I'd like to talk a little bit about sanitation. You should spot clean daily, removing any feces you see on the plants or in the substrate itself. You should also always take the water bowl out and clean it every day. Make sure when you're cleaning it, you're not using a sink or a bathtub used for humans because we want to minimize the likelihood of exposure to certain types of bacteria like salmonella. When we're cleaning, to ensure that we're using an appropriate disinfectant, we like to use the Fluker Super Scrub. This can actually be applied directly within the enclosure and or on the leaves to go ahead and disinfect those sites. And then on a weekly basis to bi-weekly basis, you can go ahead and remove as much substrate and replace it as possible. 
Next, I'd like to talk about handling behavior and safety of your crested geckos. You never want to have more than one male in an enclosure this big, two to three females will be okay with that one male. It's also really important that you take care when you're handling these animals because any kind of a fall can hurt them. Fortunately, they have very specialized toe pads that will allow them to climb almost any surface, including glass, such as these vertical surfaces here. So I'm just going to gently open this box and I can see one of my crested geckos right on the top. I'm going to gently hold the animal and using my index finger and thumb, I can support the animal and or let it walk into my hands. This way it doesn't actually escape or get away. And you'll notice I'm not putting any pressure on the tail because they can experience natural tail autonomy which means that they can actually lose their tail, but they don't regenerate as they do with our leopard geckos. In this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and put our gecko in and give them some time to acclimate that to that new environment before I start to handle them. It's also important to recognize a few other things about our crested geckos, such as that they do like to shed and shed on a regular basis, and they'll often eat that shed, and that's a natural process. A few other things to consider that if you do find that your crested geckos aren't eating or aren't as active, they're spending more time hiding, you notice that they seem skinny or that they have swollen joint or a discharge from the eyes, the nose or the mouth, or they have a, a diarrhea uh, run, running in their uh, droppings, it's important to contact a veterinarian because there are a number of diseases that are treatable that they can help you with. I really hope this information was most helpful to you. And there's even more information available to you on our product at our website, lucrefarms.com. Also, check on our Reptile U section for crested gecko care at our website.